hopefully you guys are doing good today. So I really don't have any plans as of yet because we need to um, figure out um, the main purpose of this session anyway is um, to be available to answer any questions you guys have, um, check in with you, see how you are feeling uh, in terms of the journey, your cloud journey, how you are feeling about the project and to keep you motivated. So um, I would open the floor if anyone has I'll start with questions. So if you have any questions, concerns, or something in particular you are trying to get an information on, let me know. Okay. So you guys are a little bit quiet today. So are you guys working on the project? Um, what is your take so far in terms of how is the project going for you? And if not the project, just in general, how is your cloud journey going? Good morning. How's Good morning. everyone? Come on. I'm glad to be here. Um, so it's been a heck of a journey for me. Uh, it, I am, you know, it's a roller coaster. Uh, every day I have moments of extreme, you know, positivity and thinking uh the you know i can go anywhere i want and do anything i want to do and then uh there's other moments where i'm like who am i fooling it's gonna be a year and a half if i'm lucky before i get a job <laughs> um that's in general kind of what i am experiencing um and uh, you know i think a lot of it is just trying to um under, like it's like learning a new language and mm -hmm. um and also when you're learning a new language like I, I it's trying to get a good uh feeling and sense of the topography of this whole landscape and how do you pick that that correct and narrow path that gets you to your destination um so that's that's kind of part of the mix of it all and then specifically with the the projects um i'm having successes but i'm also having challenges and hidden roadblocks that are preventing me from really moving forward um especially considering like i'm at the point where uh i need to get snapshots to move on and i'm okay. so close but i'm so far away you know it's, okay it's that feeling so okay cool um uh, so i'll start with um your first um, they, on the first thing you mentioned about having going through the highs and lows, that some days you feel uh, very motivated and some days you feel like, what's the point of it? Um, I'll let you know that that feeling is um, is normal. I've gone, I've gone through that feeling too when I was learning and sometimes I still go through it now, you know, but I can guarantee you that how you want to look at it is you just have to always stay consistent and keep doing it every day. So one thing I le I've learned is that there's never really a right time where you really feel like doing anything. You know what I mean? You don't have to feel like doing it to do it. You just have to do it. So if like when you wake up every morning, right, you don't have to feel like you need to brush your teeth before you brush your teeth. So that's how you have to look at you learn in the cloud too. Regardless of how you feel that day, you just have to do it because you've made it a plan, part of your daily plan to do. And if you keep doing it like that consistently, definitely you will get to your end goal. And one thing I also always mention is that, um, this is exactly what happened to me when I first started learning. The first time I started learning AWS, um, I went to the AWS site to watch their video. But then the video I was watching had a bunch of terms that I didn't understand. I, they were talking about EC2, S3. And I just felt like, oh, this is too much information for me. I don't think I can learn this. So I didn't do AWS for, I stopped learning for about eight months, right? But eight months has passed. And I found myself 
I noticed that after eight months, I was still in the same position, position that I was in, the same position that I was desperate to get out of. And, and what occurred to me is that I was telling myself that if I would have stuck with this AWS um, learning eight months ago, by eight months now, I would have been somewhere. So when you mentioned um, it might be up to a year before you get a job, the year is going to come by like so fast. So what, where you want to be is a year from now, when that time, when that time does come, that you have done all the things you need to do on your daily, uh, on a daily basis to be ready when that one year comes, because that one year is going to come and it's going to pass. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And um, it's, it's kind of refreshing to hear because I, we've, you know, we've already gone. My wife is, is uh, she'll be joining me shortly, but she's on this journey with me. We've already kind of gone through that same eight month experience that you just mentioned. And for us, that was probably for me personally, that was about two years ago uh, when I started dabbling. And then I was like, ah, it's, it's too, you know, I'll never figure it out. And I put it off. And then uh, a year ago, we picked it up and started really putting, you know, putting effort into it. But it's it's been a slower process. And over the last six months, we've really ramped up the speed and the commitment. So yeah. um, we're we're doing it every day, uh, regardless of how we feel. But it's still freaking scary. You know, it's like we've jumped off a cliff into into a, a void and we don't know what's what's below us. Yeah. Yeah, just stick with it. I guarantee you it, it is going to happen. There is literally, there is nothing stopping any of you from being a cloud engineer or whatever your goal is for that position you see yourself being in the cloud. There's literally nothing stopping you except for your daily habits. Your daily habits would determine whether you get there or not. If I could go ahead. If I could mention one specific thing, I mean, this is this is speaks exactly to the roller coaster. Like, you know, we're grinding and we've had some really good days this past week. And yesterday I, I had a chance to speak with uh, somebody who um, started out. He's, he's basically a, a developer in Web3 and he started out um, in I forget it was like C++ and then ended up in Ruby on Rails. But I, he gave me a little bit of in, insight on like where what his journey was. And with a little bit of my background, he's like, listen, you know, you're, he, you're never going to get, he's like, you're going to have a really hard time just trying to show projects and labs and a certification. He's like, you're going to have a hard time getting people to want to, wanna, to want to hire you and take a chance on a remote job. It was specifically in the comment to remote. He's like, it's really hard if you don't have any experience for people to want to make a leap on you in, in the remote world. You're, you're better off trying to focus on, you know, local companies that, you know, are big corporations that can onboard you and have teams of like 30 devs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That specific bit was like, we woke up this morning, we're like, oh man. Um, yes. And that's the final piece I have to say right now. Be, be glad yes. to where you want to take it i i understand and and one thing i always also always recommend and i always um um tell you guys to be very mindful of is when you are going on your cloud journey and i'll use myself personally as an example if i'm doing something and i'm not too sure about it where i still have doubts i try not to tell too many people in fact i probably won't tell anyone at all until I have applied my efforts and see where the effort gets me, right? So I'm saying that to say, I do hear this a lot where um, um, someone will say that someone told them this about um, cloud in terms of someone might say, oh, there is no job in cloud. Or someone might say, oh, it's, it's very hard to learn. Oh, you have to... Um, there's too much coding or whatever the case may be where it could something be basically what i'm trying to say is be mindful of information that could be discouraging to you you know there there are tons of jobs online you know there are 
a lot of jobs from different companies that are looking for different things. So you are just one person and um, everyone in this class is just one person. So to, there would be companies that will be willing to hire you because like I said, all you have to do is get to the interview. Once you get to the interview and they ask you questions and you can answer the questions, you can prove that you can do the work. At that point, what is the difference between someone that's already working in the field and someone that is just coming into the field? So for me, I would say is the knowledge and the skill sets that you have that matters, not necessarily if you've worked in the field um, before. So again, when you guys are going through your journey, because right now you there is a lot of things that you aren't sure about, be very careful of the information you receive that would kind of like mis discourage you. Um, but I know personally companies that they hire people from boot camp all the times. The company that I currently work for, most of the every month when we have our uh, monthly meeting, there is always a new hire. And when they talk about their experience, some of them uh, came fresh out of boot camp. And also think about it. If they don't want to hire you that don't have any experience, right, in terms of you haven't worked in the field. Uh, where does that lead? Where does that leave on new college graduates? Are those people not going to get hired too because they don't have experience? So if a company is not willing to take a chance on you, I think uh, you shouldn't feel bad about it because there is there are many other companies that will. That's what I would say. But I in, in the meantime, just focus on building your skill sets. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. I mean, this is this is where my head and my heart is with everything you just said. Um, but as we feel around for information, you, you know, exactly. You're exactly right. Sometimes we can get kind of led astray. Um, mm -hmm. It's good to keep this stuff kind of. Yeah. Uh, okay. To your chest. Thank you. No problem. No. OK. Um, how is everyone else doing? Um, are you going through the projects? Yeah, um, maybe. Uh, uh, I really Hey, Aziz. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, my uh, uh, cloud journey has been very interesting. <laughs> I uh, I joined this um, uh, this uh, boot camp, and um, I started with the the project. I went in like at least about half of it, <laughs> and then um, in the course of um, searching, so I was doing the the project and then searching at the same time. Okay, and um, I had a few you know uh, uh let, let me say successes uh where recruiters will reach out to me mm -hmm. okay so in the course of a uh, conversation and you know asking about my experience and the, the very specific things that uh, they were looking for uh, i started jotting things down in terms of you know the very uh, skill set and you know the specific questions that they do ask so you know i'll come back and then um uh, research uh, again, uh, to make sure that um, at least I have some uh, awareness or I have some overview of those uh, very things. Mm -hmm. And then this kept going on, um, talking to recruiters, doing the uh, projects at the same time. And then um, sometime around last year, uh, this was in November, then I had a, um, an offer from uh, the Homeland Security. Oh, wow. That's yes. big. Yes. So I didn't even finish my uh, projects, but I've already gotten a job with the whole Homeland Security. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's yes, great. Thank you. Yes. So oh, oh, Homeland Security is one of the uh, best companies to work for. I know it's a government agency, but yes, they, they, they pay very well. I've actually gotten an offer from them before as well from one of a contractor, a contractor that works for Homeland, Homeland Security. Okay. And, okay. Um, and, but I, they somehow the position got caught. They said they, they weren't moving forward mm -hmm. due to budget. So that was how I didn't end up working there, but it's definitely a great, anytime you get a job working for the U S government is always a good experience. I would say. 
Yes, yes. And it, it has been uh, ever since. Uh, it's been like almost three months um, I've joined them. And um, um, I mean, I don't have all the experience, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, they have, they have a, a very good uh, team over there um, that um, I, I'm part of. So when the job is is, is, um, is split, we have a, we have a sprint mm -hmm. and uh, the jobs are, are, are shared. And you have two weeks to uh, to finish your part. Yes. Okay, so that gives you enough room to do all the research that uh, um, that you need in order mm -hmm. to, 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 to do it. And so far, uh, my uh, PM um, is very uh, confident about me, um, uh, is very proud. I mean, like every time she she, she, she asks me uh, something and I'm able to produce it, she's like, oh, wow, you are awesome, you know. But I don't, I don't have all the, all, all, all the skill set. I have not even completed my uh, project yet. You know all the projects that over the years so just want to throw uh this out there uh let people know that uh what i did that made me successful is while i am doing the trainings i'm also talking to recruiters okay mm -hmm. you talk to recruiters that is the first point of entry you talk to recruiters they will ask you all the stuff that the the company is looking for in terms of uh, uh, a good candidate right mm -hmm. so i mean you will not be able at at, at first you will not be able to articulate well for them to know that oh this is the right candidate for me to present to the companies right so mm -hmm. you start jotting things down that you feel like you don't know and then um search make research talk to people who are already in the field um to give you uh some kind of a guidance or uh take you know, do whatever you can, basically do whatever you can to make sure at least you have uh, or you, you are able to um, get some awareness on some of the things that uh, they are mentioning. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, you, 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 you get it. And my is, 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 is a remote job as well. You know, Great. and yeah, Great. then I don't have any experience with uh, uh, in, in the cloud. I just started, um, I gave it all I, I, I can. I mean, yes effort effort and money yes went into it for me i'll say about 90 percent of uh, uh uh the things that i put there is is effort mm -hmm. you know I, I i i have been present like presently there uh i do a lot of research mm -hmm. okay and uh, i pay money if 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 it if it is money that will get me there i pay money i'm ready to do that mm -hmm. you know so like you know and and I don't discuss that much too. There are a lot of my friends who don't know that this is what I'm I'm I'm, I'm going into. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw it out there that uh, yes. it, it it is worth it. It works if you um, yes. if you give it that uh, commitment. You know, yes, thank you, thank you, Roland. And uh, and that's also a perfect example of um, what Noah was speaking to um, earlier. And as you can see, and the the. That's just one person. I guarantee you, all you have to do is, like I told you guys last week, all you have to do is go online, right? If you go on Just Indeed and search for uh, cloud engineer positions, you will see tens of thousands of positions that are open. What you have to think in your mind is one of those tens of thousands of company will be willing to take a chance on you. So don't ever think that you can't get a remote position um, starting out and um you don't, like i always said you don't have to know it all the main goal of the projects and things that i'm walking you guys through is to help you guys have a good solid foundation and knowledge that even if they assigned anything to you that you don't know you can rely on the knowledge of what you know to help you get your tax done. And as Roland also said, there is, you work in sprints. Sprints for most companies are usually two weeks. So if they give you, if they assign something to you, uh, a tax to you to get done, you have two weeks to do your research and come up with a plan to get it done. So the main thing you need to do is believe in yourself, be consistent and do the work i guarantee you you will see the results 
there's nothing there's nothing about the cloud that anyone can learn all you have to do is just apply yourself so thank you for that Roland yeah and um, it was a time uh, when I first joined my first uh, uh, task that was given you know I, I didn't know um, and it, it was about uh, well they asked me to uh, uh, build a pipeline it, it was a devops uh, you know related you know build a, a ci cd pipeline mm -hmm. um so they it was uh, they wanted me to add a uh, cypress um cypress to build a cypress tool into the ci cd uh, pipeline and it was mm -hmm. very challenging and uh, it's not something i've done before i i remember i even came on i tried to reach out to you as this but i didn't get no response i don't know whether you did get my email or whatever it is so you know, just to add to the fact that yes, when you get there, you you see uh, a lot of new things that you have not uh, uh, learned in the in the bootcamp. You have time to research. You have time to research uh, or, or reach out to people. This is a time that you rather want to reach out to people uh, instead of reaching out to people that will give you you know that will bring your spirit down in the course of the training. So yeah, I just want to tell you. That. Yeah, thank you. Um, at least I think you raised your hand for so I'll go yeah. with you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. So yeah, this is uh, this is great. Um, I, I came in a little bit later, so I, I picked up a little bit of what Noah was saying and um, Roland. And and all I wanted to say is regarding to some of the uh, some some of you know of you that may feel discouraged or anything. Um, like Roland said, you don't have like I don't have a job yet, honestly. But even I'm I'm a scrum master, and so with um um you know with the the way uh the team works, like um you know as Isa said it as well, it's two weeks, and you know these tasks are given to the 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 teams, and you know they will go back and do their research, and and a lot of times I see them you know, always connecting with that SME, like a subject matter expert, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like, it's like, even it doesn't matter how much they know, but like that subject matter expert is like there to help them. Yes, and he's always like, you know, they're always troubleshooting. Like after the daily stand up, they'll be like, oh, can we connect and, you know, go over this. So <clears throat> yes, you don't have to know like everything. Cause I mean, even though, even if you use like, three years to learn this, you will still not know everything. It's yes, only by doing and, you know, pick up little here and there and just be able to defend, um, like Roland said, maybe most of what you saw on the job description, read it very well and see, you know, what are the things that you can, um, you can pick up from there because sometimes these job description, you might not even end up doing everything that's on there. So, um, definitely do not give up. And, um, you know, like, as you said, you really just have to, put your 100 on, on these projects, like no focus on knowing your stuff. So by the time they come to the interview, the ones you don't know, you tell them like, Hey, I might not know this, but give me, you know, give me some time. I would, I would learn it, you know, and I've, I know a, a few of my friends who have gotten jobs. Um, and you know, they, some question, they didn't answer to all the questions, but you know, they're sure that, Hey, you know, just give me some time. I will learn this and I will let you know what it is. And, you know, they loved that honesty and they give them the job. So yeah, just uh, keep, keep at it. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yes. That, thank you, Alice. And uh, that is true. So um, I have actually last two weeks ago, we were actually troubleshooting something. Uh, uh, one of, cause the team that I'm on now is like a platforms team. So with platform, it's kind of like DevOps, but we build the AWS infrastructure, like the VPC um, and all the things in it, right? And other teams would deploy their services in our VPC. So if they have an application, we'll give them access to the VPC and they can come in there and deploy their EC2 or whatever they are hosting the applications on. One of the engineers didn't have um, one of the Lambda function he was trying to trigger wasn't working. And when we tried to troubleshoot it and we didn't get anywhere to, we opened a ticket with AWS and their engineers, we had a meeting with them. They came in and they were able to point us in the right direction. So I'm only saying that to say, just like Elise said, you don't have to know it all. But by me saying you don't have to know it all is not 
trying to give you a pass that you don't have to learn anything either. Make sure you learn. Make sure you learn. Do your part. Learn what you need to learn. Go in with a good foundational knowledge that you can rely on to get your tax done. So that's what I would say. Um, uh, Miguel, uh, please go ahead. Mm. Hi, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Um, the, these projects count as professional experience. Uh, that's that's what I'm assuming, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Right. Um, called, is it also better to apply for junior role, especially for those who have no IT, solid IT background? Uh, junior cloud engineering, you know, uh, is that also okay? Yes, that's fine. If you feel like you need to apply to a junior role, you can do that. Um, or you can apply to just a regular um, entry level role. That is fine. That is yeah. fine as well. As long as um, whenever you want to start applying, you can assess where your knowledge is. And yeah. <clears throat> based on the job requirements as well, if you feel confident that you can do the job, whether you are reading a job requirement for a junior engineer role or a entry level role, it would be based on the job requirement. You don't have to know how to do 100% of everything in it, but the right. main skills that they are looking for in that position that when you start on day one, they want you to be, they want you to have knowledge on those skills, then um, you can certainly apply to those positions if you feel you have the skills. Um, so it depends, right. it depends on the job descriptions. And I would say the projects you guys are doing because if you guys look at it, we are not doing anything easy. We are not just doing a demo of an EC2 instance in the VPC and teaching you how to launch an EC2 instance. You're actually building an entire reference architecture that has a lot of core AWS services in it and making sure that the end goal of that um, application when the end users access it, it is also secure. These are the things you will be doing on a day-to-day -day at work when it comes to deploying an application in the cloud. There might be different solutions to how a company wants to deploy an application or the service they want to use, but the knowledge of what you are learning and in terms of being able to build a solution in the cloud, which is what you are doing in the projects now, does count as an experience. It might not count as a it depends on the companies you are looking at. Some Someone might say, oh, it doesn't count as in the work experience, but it is an experience because the management console you are using to do all these things is no different from the management console you will use at work. You know, So if you know how to do something, you know how to do it. Thank you. How's your day-to-day -day like at work right now? You said you're currently employed. So is that, are you working like nine to five? and then weekend off yes so my day-to-day -day is actually my company we actually work 38.75 hours a week so which counts as full time so yeah. um my day-to-day -day is nine to five i usually log in um well is my our call hours is they expect you to work eight hours right but our call hours is nine to three meaning that nine to three, you have to be online and you have to be available if anyone is reaching out to you for any type of um, resource or question, right? So the, by saying call hours, that means that you have to be online during those hours. Then the other hours, you just have to get in your eight hours. So you can choose to start earlier or start later and and leave um, later, <clears throat> but the core hours is nine to three. Um, when I log in in the morning, the first thing is our daily standup, where you give an update of the current tax you are working on, if you have any issues or the progress you are making on that tax. And uh, after the daily standup, it all, it all depends. You have pretty much the entire day to work on whatever tax has been assigned to you in that sprint and um and between those times too you might have some meetings at your company whatever uh, meetings is set up 
at my company i really don't have one thing i love about devops position is there aren't always too many meetings so i have a lot of free times to focus on the tasks that is assigned to me Productive. i can i can talk about currently the tasks that i'm work that i'm that is currently assigned to me in this sprint is to create um a cloudwatch a cloudwatch dashboards for um some of the cloudwatch metrics that we want to monitor so they want me to create a one space um, dashboard that has all the metrics we want to monitor for certain services and another task that is assigned to me is creating an s3 bucket for another team that they need to they need that s3 bucket to be able to do whatever they need to do obviously when you are creating the s3 bucket they based on your company's policy yeah the idea is create an s3 bucket but there might be additional settings like um does the bucket needs to be encrypted um mm -hmm. does do we need to apply bucket policy to it who needs to have access to the, to that bucket there are always all those things that plays in but the tax is as simple as create an s3 bucket you know so oh. that's my day today okay uh lastly um i'm not gonna ask you how much your tax is because i know it's big <laughs> but um uh, like your your device that you're using uh, aziz uh how big is your monitor i because currently i i i'm not gonna i can't buy a second monitor yet i mean just using our tv as a second screen <laughs> it's okay. kind of lagging you know i i think i I can afford it more when I land a role. So right now I'm just using my laptop and my TV. But how big is your monitor right now? My oh. monitor, do I even know the size? But my monitor is like, I'll say 20 inch. And uh, just one? one yeah, monitor. I have two monitors. So I have one, um, I have two monitors. One that I watch the do stuff on and the other one is by documentation. So let's talk, are you, do you you live in the united states no no uh london london okay let's talk offline so okay we, we can we can discuss about that so no problem. Do, definitely don't worry about that let's talk offline thank um, you but yeah so but it's always when you are going through this journey it's always good to um have two monitors and um you can do focus on the project on one and you can reference the documentation on the order. So I do use two monitors and you will find that most engineers in the always use two monitors too. Or if you have a um, HDMI cable and you just get just one monitor, you can connect the HDMI cable to that monitor and you can still use them as two where you will use your monitor screen for for um, one screen and you use the um, Right. the other monitor for the other so you can Sorry. do that as because, well because some people use wide you know the wide monitor i don't know if that's really effective no uh, has one of those it's it's really nice oh, it's okay. really nice i've seen people use that you can buy one of those big ones that it, it, i think they have those that counts as three monitors mm -hmm. so you can split it into like three screens um, it's very effective. I've, when I was yeah. troubleshooting with Noah, he has one of those. I was, I was telling Aziz, yeah, I, I've always been on the fence. Like, you know, I, I, I love to be budget conscious. And uh, a year ago when I decided to really jump in, I was like, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and, and spend more than I like on these monitors. And I haven't regretted it one bit. But all that being said, you also can get the job done really effectively with like, a hundred dollar Vizio monitor from uh, AWS. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, you can be scrappy about it. Like Facebook Marketplace, there's incredible, you know, ways mm -hmm. to get the tools you need to get it done until yeah. uh, better resources. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, cool. Um, I think, you. Um, is it Elio? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but no, nah, no, nah, you said it right. You're actually the first one in, in the United States that said it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. No, I just wanted to talk, uh, touch bases on what um, Roland and, and Noah mentioned, right? And maybe this is just beating the dead horse a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But you know, companies out there, and you know, I've been in the uh, uh, 
government contracting space for the past few years. Uh, companies uh, are not looking for the perfect candidate, right? Yeah. They are looking for someone who has some of the skills. And again, when you read the job description, that is a script that they have, right? They have to put all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. However, if you meet at least, I would say, if you think that you meet at least a few of the requirements, if they mention Ansible, Terraform, AWS, mm -hmm. that should be enough for you to apply, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone is teachable. And most of these companies are looking for someone that they can train, mm -hmm. uh, that they are willing to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and when you go into one of these jobs, they are not going to just say, hey, you know, this is your first task. Go right ahead. There is a, um, what do you call it? Um, um, not an indoctrination, but um, I forgot. So basically you have to orientation, right? So you have to mm -hmm. go through orientation. Uh, they're going to show you, hey, you know, this is the services that we do. This is how we do it. And you most likely will get assigned someone on your team that is, hey, if you need any help, just reach out to this guy. Mm -hmm. And like I see is mentioned, right? Once we get into this space, uh, in the military, I mean, you know, I was in the Navy for eight years, and um, we always used to say we solve problems at the lowest level. If yeah. you come through uh, something that you don't understand or you don't know, we do some research, right? We exhaust all of our methods, then we reach out to someone. Hey, man, I cannot figure this out. Can you help me out? And I am almost positive that every person that you reach out will help you out, right? At least, uh, you know, at least in all the teams that I have been, you know, whether I was in the military or when I got out and I was a contractor, I mean, I'm still a contractor, but, you know, everyone will be willing to help you out. <laughs> um, just think about that. Don't get, you know, don't lose motivation. It can be done. Um, and, and, you know, most importantly, this is what you make of it, right? If <laughs> you stay motivated, trust me, you will succeed. There exactly. is no, if I succeed, you will succeed. Uh, you know, just look at it that way and just know that you have a great job waiting for there, uh, uh, waiting for you out there. No matter what, no matter the complications, you know, you spend a year doing projects, that's fine. You have to go through the projects two, three times. That's fine. It's not a problem. Um, I'm currently, I think I have like two or three projects left. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm planning on going through them again. Uh, okay. So, you know, I... I'm on the newest side to cloud. When it comes to cloud, my job right now is uh, a senior cybersecurity analyst for the Department of Veterans Affairs. And all we do is, uh, you know, like risk management and stuff like that for uh, past solutions, uh, Salesforce, Microsoft, all that stuff. But, you know, like Aziz mentioned, right, he doesn't have a ton of meetings. My days from 8.30 to 4 p.m. is full of meetings. So <laughs> I told my wife, I'm going crazy over here. I need to get out of his job. It's a good paying job. I have a great team, but it's just not, it's not doing it for me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, you know, I miss the technical side of things. Uh, this is yeah. all most, you know, documentation and all that stuff. And I don't like it. Uh, you know, I used to, when I was with DOD, I used to do, um, uh, I used to like stand up, you know, NASA scanners and, you know, security centers and stuff like that. And it was very technical. Mm -hmm. And then I took this other job because it was fully remote. But, you know, the, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Uh, yeah. But, you know, just like I said at the beginning, just keep at it. Don't don't. Uh, I know that, you know, I don't know if you guys have children. I have two small ones. Um, so I talked to my wife and I said, hey, listen, I need to get this done. So I need a few days a week where I can sit down. No distractions. I come into my office. I lock myself and I, I get it done. Right. So at the end of the day, we do what we have to do for us, for our families. Mm -hmm. and let's just keep on trucking along, man. Yeah. Thank you, Elio. Thank I you. Thank, yeah, thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and one thing I want to say is like, I, I think I, I'm going to make a video on like where I started from. So you guys can really see that I also started from a place where it seems like there is almost zero hope but I, I was just so desperate to change my job at the time and change my living condition and those things that I was just not going to take no for an answer you know there's been days where I feel like what's the point of it you know but the main thing that I can say got me through is just being consistent like I said you have to look at it 
the same way you eat every day, the same way you take shower, the same way you brush your teeth. You don't do those things because you feel like doing it. You do them because you have to. So this should be in those categories too. You will do your AWS tax, your follow your goals towards, follow your daily tax towards this goal of transitioning into AWS every day because you have to, not because you feel like it. Um, I think someone else, someone has, uh, Kofi, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, I really want to thank Aziz for this, um, this meeting. I think we really need it because it helps us to really get some boost because as Noah mentioned in the beginning, it comes a time where you really feel low and you need motivation. And I think this is what it is, it's helping us. So what I wanted to say, I think I come to realize that when I started, I was kind of rushing myself to quickly get a job because I, I kind of, I, I time myself saying that in six month period, I should be able to get into the field and it didn't happen. So it stressed me out to the point where I kind of shut down a little bit, say, you know what, it's not working. Let me look somewhere else. And then when I speak to my friend who are already working, they say, man, don't waste all that time you put in till now. Go back and keep doing it. It's gonna, your time going to come. And the other thing is like there's so much people out there doing training, doing uh, boot camp. And if you don't know, you kind of trying to peep in and see what they're doing. And all that is distracting you from mastering your skill before mm -hmm. getting into the market. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I heard um, when I mentioned that he reached out to recruiters, I have reached out to some recruiters that I'm still talking with, looking for, or looking for opportunities. Mm -hmm. And all the recruiters, basically when they reach out to you, they have a job description that has 15 year experience, 20 year experience, and then they're trying to fill up the the list, the requirement list or whatever that they have to do for the week. Mm -hmm. So then people always come up with jobs that have higher um demand of experience. Is it good to go with them or just ignore those people? Or uh, what's the best strategy to reach out to the recruiters? Um the other thing is how, because right now I'm trying to get into the government and I don't have a, um, a clearance. Okay. How was the best strategy to get in so that you can at least have a clearance to keep going? Mm -hmm. And also somebody mentioned that it's good to look for <clears throat> small, small um, business, not, not necessarily corporate, mm -hmm. where you can start. Mm -hmm. And is there any strategy or any way we can like where to start okay thank you. um yes that, that's thank you coffee that's a good uh question so um to your first question about uh strategies to reach out to recruiter so, to be honest when i started i wasn't reaching out to recruiters but i would certainly i'm not going to say you shouldn't so i'll say use whatever strategy works for you so the main thing I used to do is I would go on Indeed, search for cloud engineer jobs, and I would filter it by what I want, remote or whatever the case may be, the salary. And whatever um, results I get, I would read the job description for each one and I would apply to each one. So the good thing about it is um, Indeed lets you apply it has this easy apply that it takes less than five minutes to apply to all the jobs so for the ones that are, does have that enable uh, that has enabled easy apply so i would just apply to as many jobs as i can during the day so that was the strategy i i used um and some jobs a good strategy you can also use is that if you see a job on indeed and you apply to it go to that company's website and look for that job and apply on their website as well. I've actually gotten two offers doing that where I applied on the company's website uh, 
after I've applied on Indeed. So that's always a good strategy. Uh, recruiters get, I, I have to find someone that is a recruiter for you guys that can give you guys hints on the best strategies to reach out to recruiters. Cause I will, I'll be honest, I wouldn't tell you that I know the best strategies because I can assume that recruiters are receiving hundreds of resumes on a daily basis. So how do you stand out um, in those cases? So I would say the, the best strategy I use is just applying to as many jobs that you've read the job description and you feel you can do. Um, that would be the uh, one of the strategy I would say to use. Also, if you, um, to get in the government, you don't have to have a clearance. Certain government positions, yes, you need a clearance, like depending on what you are going to be working on. But I've worked at several government positions where I didn't need a clearance because the information that I was going to be handling is not an information that is classified under the level where I would need a clearance. So if your goal is to work in the government, certainly uh, look for positions that are uh, in the government. I know one of the requirements the government always have is that you have to have um, you have to be a, a citizen. So once you clear that, you can pretty much apply to any government position that is not requiring you to have like a, a secret clearance. And even if the position is requiring you to have it, um, you can also read in the job description because most of the time they will spell it out. They would either say, "We, you must have it. So if they say you must have it, you know they are not willing to file for one for you and that might not be an ideal job to apply to but if um they said um preferred you can still apply to it because even if you don't have it they might be willing to um file for one for you so if your goal is to apply in the government i'll say certainly um do that uh, because there's tons of position within the government that don't require you to have like a like a secret clearance um, um yeah. as this, uh, let me add to that because uh, i also went through the same uh, uh thing mm -hmm. uh, uh my uh, job with the um, um homeless security I, I i needed um a top security uh clearance or this top uh, the, i mean they call it a security clearance mm -hmm. and they they did it for me good Exactly. They did it for me. So, I, I didn't have it prior, so they did it for me. After they they, they gave me the offer letter, they went they went through um, the the clearance also for me, and that that is one of the difficult part of the hiring process. It took longer than I expected, and I almost gave up. You know, I like okay, if this is not mm -hmm. going to work, let me look for something. So I started interviewing and talking to other recruiters mm -hmm. okay because uh it, it is intensive thing and it, it involves a lot you know yeah. might took more than two months yeah you know to to get clear yeah. so um yeah so don't, don't worry um just apply i'll say just apply out there if you're interested in any government uh, um outfit just apply out there and you don't know, you know, um, a government unit might, uh, 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 you know, accept your resume or give you an offer letter and they will be willing to do it for you. So it is not all of them that will want you to have it prior to applying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ellis, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to just um, talk about the uh, the recruiting um yeah. So one thing, I, I'm not a recruiter, but I have done a lot of applications and spoke to a lot of recruiters. So one thing that's um, been helpful, um, it's uh, obviously having an updated resume. Like, let's say um, when you're ready to apply every Sunday, um, Sunday night, Monday morning, like around eight to nine, that's when a lot of recruiters are obviously on their computers. Um, you want to go ahead and update your resume, like have the most updated resume and start sending them out, um, you know, via Indeed um, through the personal uh, website. So you want to go ahead and do that. Um, but also 
a lot of a lot of my 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 jobs actually came through LinkedIn. I would say if you don't have LinkedIn and you obviously want to, you know, switch to a career, um, start by creating a LinkedIn and have like, a, you know, a, a, the uh, the paid account because I, I think that helps because you're then able to reach out to recruiters if you have the, um, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a uh, it's paid uh, subscription to LinkedIn, uh, but then you are able to reach out to all the recorders you can send them an email with your yeah premium that's right um <clears throat> with your resume and uh you know start a conversation and a lot of times you want to you want to have those recorders as not just business as people that you could always reach out to i feel like having those relationships um will really help because um i i was on a contract before and because i had that relationship with my recorder when the contract was all already coming to an end um you know we were talking about it and he was able to find me the next one so i would say um you know have your resume up to part like definitely the resume is the main one um first and then the second thing is um just apply that's the only like one way you're gonna get like just apply have your resume you know uh make sure it's visible because sometimes you could always have it like uh you could, I think you can hide it or something like that, but make sure it's visible, um, you know, on, on all those websites, Dice, Indeed, um, you know, don't just do the easy apply, do the whole thing where you go to the website, apply. Um, and I know it can be annoying, but, you know, obviously if you're looking for a job, you got to do the work. Because uh, one thing I learned actually when I was uh, in um and another um, submit or something for um, applying, they're saying that, you know, looking for a job is a job too. So you you have to put yourself there. You you definitely have to keep applying and, and keep going. So yeah, that's that's the, what I can say about that. Yeah, thank you, Elise. Yeah, so um, whatever you are doing, um, as long as you remain consistent, that's a good idea. I mean, you should always, um, if you want to reach out to recruiters, I know some recruiters, they would like to have your name on their file, even if they don't have a position open immediately. Um, they will just have you as a reference that if a position comes up that fits what you are looking for, they will reach out to you. I know there are several recruiters that has reached out to me because they already have my name um, in their file and they'll reach out to me. I just have a new position. These are the requirements. Is this is this something you are interested in? So that also, also works as well. So there isn't really, I always use Indeed. And I always tell everyone, don't use Indeed because I use Indeed. Try Indeed. And if you don't find success on Indeed, a lot of people always, like Elise said, she always finds job on LinkedIn. And I don't have much success on LinkedIn. So try whatever avenue works for you and uh, keep going for it. All you really need is just one job anyway. So try whatever avenue uh, works for you. One thing I do want to ask though is, I am definitely one of the reasons why I stopped doing live classes is because um, in the beginning of the class, you have like 20 people. By halfway towards the class, you have 10. By the end of the class, you may have two. So that used to get to me a lot because I, I definitely want to make sure that you guys are and for the live class, they paid me, you know, and if you pay me a, a certain amount of money, I expect you to get your value. So when people drop off, um, it I somehow take it, um, it does get to me because not that I'm mad at them that they drop off because I feel like I failed in terms of getting them to the, the goal um, that they were shooting for. But then I also had to realize that I cannot keep uh, you motivated in terms of you have to be able to show up and do the work. I would show up to show you what you need to do. So that is the, one of the reasons why I moved to this um, format of teaching where all the projects 
um, based on the skills you need to learn will be have been recorded and there are extensive projects. So while you work on it by yourself, I am definitely 100% dedicated to helping you get through the project and helping you learn what you need to learn. So my question is, how can I help you guys um, in addition to the project on hone the skills? Because one, one idea I have in mind now is for every project you've done, I have another application that is similar that I can tell you to deploy on your own. So if you guys are interested in that, I have to, we have to figure out how we want to do it. Whether if you guys want to do it as a team, we can break everyone up into like a small team and you guys can work um, on each project together. So that is one idea I have. So let me know how I can help you in addition to the project, um, pretty much polish your skills to the point where you feel confident that, yes, I'm ready to apply to uh, for jobs and I can work in this field as a cloud and DevOps engineer. Um, so that's one thing I want to say. Miguel. I, okay, uh, he has his hand Miguel up. has his hand up first, first. Okay. so All I'll right, go, go ahead, with him, Miguel. then I'll yeah. come back to you. Hi, Aziz. Hi. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's better um more more real hand real hands real world uh projects um follow up tasks to validate our knowledge i'm not sure how you're gonna do that but breaking us in into teams is also good but <clears throat> well, uh but even if there are many teams here we still we still need to work as one guys like if someone asks Let's let's help each other out. Um, some problems <clears throat> here because, especially if one needs technical assistance, uh, they're being left out. N not here, okay. Mm -hmm. um, th that's usually the problem with, with um, some academy or boot camps. Um, if if they have technical concern, um, mm -hmm. it it doesn't get answered. Yeah. So yeah so th th those things uh, real hands-on uh, real world projects i know you have around 13 um and you also mentioned that by by the if you will recommend us only at the end of the project you're also going to recommend us once we pass your final verdict like you're gonna ask us to deploy certain uh things using the mm -hmm. technologies and mm -hmm. if we do that you will mm -hmm. give us your recommendation that's also really good yes yeah yes. my, my only worry is because you're all you're alone <clears throat> i know that you cannot do this alone so yeah we have like more than maybe around getting to 300 already students yeah. so i just don't know how you're gonna handle that plus you have work so i'm quite worried about that mm -hmm. yeah that's it <laughs> yeah so so everybody in this in the slack channel is not really some some is some a lot of those people are not a lot some of them have has done whatever they need to do and cancel their membership right but i still leave everyone in the slack channel so if you look in the slack channel even though the number is showing that amount is not everyone that is in there and as you can see everyone work at different pace i look at the list of the active members and i send out the link in the morning i think moving forward that's what i would do I would uh, get an updated list of the active members and I will send out the Saturday, the meeting we are having now to everyone. So, and as you can see, it's 14 people in here. So if it's the, all 14 of you, I can help to get jobs. That is more than good enough for me. So everyone else that I've sent the link to, um, I cannot force everyone to be here, you know? So basically what I'm trying to say is, I am definitely dedicated to helping you and whoever shows up, I would help, you know? And my idea for those projects is maybe what I would do is even if I don't break you guys into team, you guys will have the same. Once you have done the, for example, the first project, once you have completed it, I will have another application that is similar that you need to deploy. I will give you the instructions of how I want it deployed. And maybe 
whatever questions you guys have while you are brainstorming on how to solve the problem you guys can communicate in the chat and share ideas with each other on how you how you resolved it and how you can help others resolve it resolve it as well also the part of the reason why we have the chat is so i also want you i want to encourage you guys that beyond i know the first level is getting a job but i also recommend that beyond getting a job that you guys should also look into mentoring other people as well so this could be a, a good opportunity for you yeah. to mentor so certainly um as other people come come up in the project when they have questions if it is something you can answer i encourage you guys to take that as a challenge to see how you can um help them out that would help your knowledge as well you know yeah. so you guys can look at it as i am working and i i'm trying to level up my skills by also providing um this service to you guys which also turned into another source of income for me so that is how i always recommend that you guys look at it take it beyond just getting a nine to five and take it to the next level where you can also be a mentor to someone so if you want to be a mentor under my program you are certainly welcome to do that there is nothing stopping you from actually finding some people that you want to mentor and tell them oh these are the projects that i did and i feel it would help you whatever you want to charge them you can get them to sign up and just be their mentor just like we have a meeting now you can have your meetings with them and walk them through the projects the idea is endless what you can do with it so so to answer your question about um you are worried about how many people i have if i feel at some point that i don't have enough i'm not able to re um, help everyone the way i need to i would certainly find people to do it and one thing i'm also relying on is that as you guys um as your knowledge improved that you are also helping other people that are coming yeah. along the way as well so that would be like a good challenge to yeah. uh, to learn but uh from what i've seen from when i've done i've been doing this there's over 100 people we only have 14 people in here so yeah so whoever shows up <clears throat> is who i'm going to help um i think roland you. roland you wanted to say something oh yes yeah. so um uh, on the way of um uh, tracking performance and uh um uh, checking on those who are really doing the project I, I will suggest that at the end of every project have some like a, an assignment okay that uh, you know we can do mm -hmm. and then submit to you yes okay. yes yeah so it has to be there it will be submitted to you you check it and then uh pass or fail or give your uh, give your comment i think at this point we don't have anything like that you just finish one project go mm -hmm. to the other project so i think uh, yeah if you can incorporate um you know life something that you will that that will get to you at, at the end of it mm -hmm. you will go through it and then pass or fail or make a recommendation i think it will motivate people to complete it and then uh, uh, do the assignment practical assignment or either practical or theory assignment and then knowing that it will get to you and then the result will come back to uh, to us yeah yeah i agree so uh, that's something i will work on on is helping you guys um having an assessment which is will be another similar application mm -hmm. for you guys to deploy at the end and i will have the requirements because one thing i also uh kofi mentioned it is that uh one thing i noticed is that um uh, uh, you guys not you guys but uh, some people have seen they I don't know everyone's finance. Trust me, I was once there. When I make the video, you guys will see. I was once there with finance, right? But I will say, while you are learning, don't make finance um, 
don't prioritize that over the um, knowledge you are going to get from potentially get from a a program so i noticed that uh, when some people sign up and normally honestly the information that i'm sharing with you guys is and the amount i'm charging for it is not um is not a good indication of the value of the project because you can pay thousands of dollars for um, other people's boot camp and i guarantee you you won't even see half of this information that's true um, yeah, but I, I but agree. but <laughs> but i uh, thank you thank you for confirming that and i've also been in other people's boot camp where they've invited me and i've seen how it is set up um and i it's uh, to their defense is not because because boot camp is just so tight you would have to do boot camp for six months and out to be able to cover all this information because in boot camp there's so many things like troubleshooting issues um people having different type of issues so it just makes it longer and it, it doesn't make the learning process as efficient as it should be so which is why i've put this project out there and i choose not to charge thousands of dollars for it even just to have access to all the projects i said for 50 dollars, right and something one thing i noticed is that when people sign up they would get the project done in one month they will go through all 15 projects within one month and cancel their membership that is fine with me but you have to really the question you have to ask yourself is what are you trying to get out of it because um i would say um that it is not about completing the project i always tell you guys that don't i don't care if you complete the project i care that you have complete the project because you understand it so if you went from a to z on one project if you absolutely understand everything you did and I give you another application and you can deploy it, then yes, you have complete that project. But if you just followed along with what I did and you got you you got to the end of the project and you moved on to the next project, then you are only hurting yourself. So that's one thing I want to recommend that as you are doing the project, uh, try to understand what you are doing and prioritize your your knowledge and the knowledge you are gaining from the project over trying not to try not to spend money you know um so that is that is what i would say uh, and if you guys do that i guarantee you you will you will see the results so maybe a good way to bridge that gap is having that assessment after each project that even if you are rushing through that project and at the end if you can deploy the next project then that shows me that you understand it so um that's what i would say on that um i haven't been reading the questions in the comment uh, yeah so self and I, and one thing i also want to mention is that everything you are doing now kind of simulates what you will be seeing at work at work uh nobody is going to be forcing you to do do your uh what you whatever taxes are assigned to you right nobody is going to chase you down to show up for your daily stand-ups nobody is going to but they keep track of these things if you miss your daily stand-up whether you are remote or not they keep track of it and you can get fired just immediately so all the disciplines that you guys have now that you are using to um show up to the meeting um um the discipline you have to get up every morning and turn on your computer and do the project those are the same discipline you are kind of like already teaching yourself um how it is going to be like at work because remote job it's not like office where your manager is always in the office and you have to have someone on your back to do what is assigned to you so you still have to have the same type of um, dedication and commitment with remote work so everything you are doing now is, is preparing you for that 
working on two screens. The reason why we are using Slack is because most, a good amount of the job you may have, the, the job you may have may be using Slack. A good, one thing I find is that jobs that has Google as their email service use Slack and jobs that have Outlook as their service always use Teams, but both tools are the same. So we are using Slack just to help you get familiar with how to use Slack. We are using double monitors to help you get familiar with that. We are installing tools on our computer like Visual Studio Code and Terraform and all these things. Because when you get your laptop, these tools are not going to be installed on it for you. Part of your onboarding job will be they will give you a list of the tools you need to install on your computer. So you have to do the setup on your computer by yourself. So think of it that everything you are doing with this self-paced project would help you in some capacity when you start your work. So that's how um, you should look at it. Um, so, so, yeah, so while you're going through the project, if you have any troubleshooting um, request or you have any questions, let me know. I would certainly try to help you um, to the best of my ability. Aziz, did you have any, uh, uh, did you have a big failure at work? How, how did you overcome it? Like, especially when you were starting, did you kind of, you know, learning and then you kind of mess up on something? How do you fix it? yeah so um a big failure at work what failure would i say i've had i, I haven't well one of the things one of um one thing i would consider a failure is one time i was supposed to get something done right and what did i do i think i ended up making change on it i was supposed to do something but rather than Okay, let's say when you are working in Git, right? When they ask, and that is something I will teach you guys right before you leave this program to also understand just the workflow around Git. And this was very early on. So a task was assigned to me. When you work with the GitHub repository at work, right? When they assign something for you to change, don't change it in the main repository they have. You always have to create a branch of that repository and a branch is just a copy of the repository they have you create another copy of your own you make your change on that copy and once someone review your change and everything is fine they would merge it margin means they would now combine it into the uh, main repository so i think one of the failures i had early on not think one of the failures I had early on is making my change in the main repository because even the company I was working at at that time, the, the repository, they didn't have any restriction in, on the main that you couldn't make any changes to it. So that was what I learned early on that no matter what you are working on, even if your company requires, they don't have any res restriction on the main branch, if they assigned you to do anything in that repository, always um, create a branch of that repository and make your change on that branch. That's do you also I'm... raise a PR? Yes. Yeah, so PR is, raising a PR is once you have made your changes on your branch and you are ready to uh, merge it into main. So when I say merge into main is they will take the change you made and if everything is good, they will combine it with the main branch. I would definitely show you guys that um, before you guys leave this program. We might even do it in one of those this Saturday session where we would uh, just walk through that workflow. And ultimately at the end, when you guys work on the, the, the final project where you have to do all these things that I said, you need to be able to prove your skills it would be part of the things you would do to where uh, we would probably even create another um, another environment where you would we will have like a dev environment and a prod environment where 
you will do something in dev and you will ultimately uh whatever change uh you make in dev once everything is good we will push it to prod so the point of what we are doing here is to make everything we are doing here as close to what your day-to-day -day would be like at work and when you live here and you start work on the first day you won't feel lost you won't feel like oh man i don't know what to do i don't know how to um install visual studio code on my computer or or believe it or not i've worked with an engineer before and when we were onboarding we both started together and when we were onboarding he asked me he said what is visual studio code and and i was i was surprised and to his defense there there was a lot of stuff i didn't know when i started working in the cloud as well when i got my first job there was a half of the things you guys are doing in this project now i didn't know any of it the only thing i've done when i got my first job was the wordpress project so so you guys at this level at this rate that you guys are going you definitely knew you definitely know more than me than i did when i got my first job okay uh go ahead miguel uh aziz so mm -hmm. i noticed that there's a lot of demand on Terraform, Kubernetes, Jenkins, Ansible. Um, I think some of them are already on our uh, lineup of projects. Mm -hmm. But uh, if since you're, I think you're gonna create or build more projects for us. Please, mm -hmm. can you please involve those in demand technologies? Because I always see that in the in the job description when yes. I when I look for jobs. Yeah, that's all. Yes, thank you. Yes, no problem. Yes, yeah, so we. With all the in-demand skills, the only thing that is not on your project now is Kubernetes, right? I would try to do a Jenkins uh, project. We would do, I would try to do one and we would do one, but I wouldn't prioritize Jenkins over other CI CD tools because in the environments that I've worked at, right? We only use Jenkins to, we only use Jenkins for things like terminating an EC2 instance or 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 just doing one minor things we really don't use Jenkins in like the full CI CD Jenkins is not the number one um two in like um most of the projects that have been in the main CI CD tool we are using which is why I don't prioritize Jenkins over other CI CD tools I'm actually going to come out with a full CI CD project that I was showing you guys um, in two weeks. And this project brings in everything with this, all the projects you've worked, you are working on so far. Mm -hmm. That CI CD project is almost at the end of it. And it is a combination of literally all the projects because you have to understand all the projects to, for the CI CD pipeline to make sense to you and i think i kind of showed you guys last week but i can uh show you guys again what yeah. the project looks like um so i'm not sure what screen i'm sharing um, we see the zoom okay the zoom okay cool yeah that's the screen i want to share so this is the ci city project right and let me zoom in here so you can say it is the same it is the same reference architecture right but these are the pipelines we are going to build and these pipelines are pretty much in order for you to understand this pipeline you have to understand like the projects we've done so so for example in the first pipeline we are going to configure our aws credentials like to give us access into AWS so we can start creating our resources. And we are building, we will be building our CI CD using on um, GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is one of the best CI CD tools we you can, you should, you I you should learn about. You should prioritize learning GitHub Actions or other modern CI CD tools over Jenkins. Yeah. In our true. environment, we use GitHub Actions. We yeah, don't we use GitHub Actions too. Good. 
So we don't use we don't use Jenkins because if you think about it, Jenkins you have to manage your server, and a lot of companies that are actually using Jenkins are trying to move away from Jenkins because with Jenkins you have to have an active server that you are managing. With each of these blue things you see here, they count as a server right in. They count as a server in GitHub Actions, but the good thing about them is you don't manage them. Once you write your configuration file for your CI CD pipeline, you specify um, they are called runners. So I will teach you all this, all this stuff in the project. You specify what, which runner you want to use, and they are pretty much a server that GitHub provides to you. And once the server is done, for example, in this first job, once the server is done configuring our AWS credentials, it goes away. So you are not actively managing any server. So I think that's one of the benefits of um, using CI CD tools like GitHub Actions. So just to explain this pipeline briefly, um, in the first pipeline, we are going to configure our AWS credentials. So that way we have access to start building resources in AWS. And here, this DevOps engineer is you. And once you commit your code into you commit your code into your GitHub repository using Git, right? It triggers the pipeline. So in the first step, we will configure our AWS credentials. In the second step, another server will come up that is provided by GitHub. And on that server, we will install Terraform on it. And once we install Terraform on it, then that server will build our entire AWS infrastructure which is pretty much what you guys are doing by hand now. But that's how I would build everything, the VPC with public and private subnets, um, the internet gateway, route tables, um, the ECS service, um, the IAM role, S3 bucket, everything you see in this reference architecture, we would build here. But when we build it, we still have to do some additional configurations for our application to be fully deployed because the first step here with Terraform is just building our AWS infrastructure. Then in the next step, in the next step here, we are going to create our ECR repository where we will store our Docker image. And in the next step, I would explain this in detail. I don't want to go into, I don't want to convince you now, but this next job here is creating this EC2 instance. Remember I said, that um, GitHub provides the machine you use to build the image. But in this step here, we are going to create our own machine that we will use to build our Docker image and migrate data into our database. The reason why we are creating our own machine to do this, just these two jobs is because, for example, here, we need to migrate our data into our RDS database, right? And our RDS database is in the private subnet. And if we use one of these GitHub machine, the, as you guys know, in AWS, everything is denied by default. So unless we set up some type of additional special configuration, these runners that are provided by GitHub would not have access into our database in the private subnet. So it would be difficult to migrate our data that is why we are creating our own runner in in that private subnet to easily allow that runner to connect to the database to migrate our data and that will be this job here and this job is just exporting our environment variable into this s3 bucket and once we have the, performed these two jobs with this runner the next job we create here will terminate this is this EC2 instance. So we would never leave it in our private subnet. We would literally launch them. They would do two, these two jobs. And once they are done, they would terminate. Uh, once these two jobs has been performed, this next job will terminate that EC2 instance. And once we have done that, we will update our tax definition and restart our ECS service. And at the end, at the end, um, my Zoom thing is in the way. Let me minimize this. And at the end, we will have our application fully deployed. 
So this is the CI CD2 where will be the project that I'm going to release in the next two weeks. And it is a really good um, project that shows you exact, pretty much everything from end to end. So everything you guys have worked on so far, they come in, in this project where you are, you will rely on your knowledge to understand everything we are doing here. And I do, as I've done with other projects, I would walk you through everything code by code, step by step. So, so when it comes to CI City, we will be focusing more on GitHub actions rather than Jenkins. But if I do have time at the end, well, not if I do have, have time, once we have covered all the important tools that we need to cover, I would do a project on Jenkins. Um, but I wouldn't prioritize Jenkins over uh, GitHub Actions. Then I would also do the one final project that I need to add to the list of things you guys need to know is the Kubernetes project. And I would be working on that project next. So that would be the next project I will release, uh, a project on Kubernetes. Thank you, Aziz. Looks, no looks, uh, looking forward. Yeah. Yeah, this looks so cool. So sorry, I was I also raised my hands here, but I, I'm oh, sure yeah. maybe you can see. Oh, yeah. um, okay. So Great. the um um yeah, this it looks really cool. So what we've been doing is pretty much we've been doing it manually. Mm -hmm. So um so so GitHub actions, that's like it's kind of like Jenkins as well. Yes, exactly. It's like so Jenkins so are we better. setting up uh, Oh, okay. So are we setting up that the, the process at the top, at the very top? Because I, I thought everything would be manually. So it's like it triggers everything. It's like because uh, some videos I've watched, obviously, maybe it can be misleading or something. But it's like you're like at the click of a button, you, it pretty much does everything. And that was with Jenkins. So I don't know much about uh, GitHub Actions. But um, yeah. yeah, so are, are we setting up everything at the top here? Yeah, so so we will set everything up. So the good thing about GitHub Actions is you you are not you don't have to install anything. It is literally as simple as, and you guys don't be intimidated by the what you see. I guarantee you, um, you guys can learn this thing. You will learn it. It's not even can. You will learn it. So don't be intimidated by it at all. There is nothing in here that is intimidated. There's nothing in here that is intimidating. So this will be the entire code I'll walk you through and I can demo it for you guys so you guys can see. Uh, so once you have, this is the entire pipeline. So all the all these things you see here are the uh, pipeline that I'm showing you here. They are all this. So once we've um, create, write our configuration and I walk you through each one step by step. So you are not just going to fully have all this code at once. We will start here, line for line until we are done with all the codes. So this is how GitHub Actions work. In this folder, I have my Terraform code. And if you guys can see, these are the code from the Terraform project. So. So we have my Terraform codes here and I've already deployed this because I, I finished recording the video this morning. So, but right now the state is deployed. The state of this pipeline is deployed because if I go to my website, the, the application that I'm, that I'm hosting in this, uh, this is the application. You can see it is up. So now I want to delete. The good thing about this project is it covers every, all the skills. Remember last week I told you guys that to be a cloud engineer, right? These are the skills you need. I can tell you now what this project covers. This CI CD project with the reason, and this is the reason why I've put it at the end. This CI CD project covers Linux. It covers Git, it covers AWS, it covers Terraform, it covers Docker, and it covers CI CD. So of the seven tools, of the seven tools you need to learn, right? This CI CD covers literally six of them extensively, not just on a surface level, extensively. 
So that is the reason why I have put all the other projects in the beginning to build your skills up to the point where you get to this project and um, you can learn this project to pretty much bring all the skills in. And um, so one thing I also want to mention is maybe I'll show you guys that picture at the end. When I see little things, I always save it because I always try to look for like ways to motivate you guys. Uh, I think I save it. Uh, let me check. There's a post I saw on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, did I save it? Maybe I didn't. Uh, uh, I I don't think I did, but I think I took a screenshot of it. I will email it to myself and I will still show you guys. Um, um, the main thing I want to say is like, when you guys are going through your journey, right? You want to make sure you pick up all the little, little skills along the way. The little skills is what turns to one big knowledge. So one of the mistakes I see everybody making is well, some people, I won't say everybody, some people it's like you just started learning and because they are telling you that companies are requiring Kubernetes knowledge and you want to learn Kubernetes by week three, it doesn't work like that. You have to pick up all the little, little skills along the way. And those little skills is what turns to one big skills at the end. So in order for you to learn Terraform, you have to do the projects manually in the, in the management console. And in order for you to do the project in the management console, you have to do the cloud practitioner solutions architect course. So everything is kind of like a build up on the previous one. So this is the project and how GitHub Actions really works is here in this pipeline. One thing I've worked into this pipeline is here. I'm going to type destroy. So when I have applied there, it means I want to run Terraform apply to create my infrastructure. So now if I type destroy in this pipeline, and I'm going to save my file. When I save my file, it is going to show me that I have an, a new update. So if I go to source control here, I'm going to commit my message and I will sh I'm literally show you guys all this. Uh, I'm just going to do, uh, uh, just type my commit message can be anything. So I'll type Terraform. Uh, running, I'm going to type running Terraform. Um, destroy. Right. So once I type my commit message, I'll click commit. And once I commit the changes, I'll click sync changes to push my code. Once I push my code, let me go into my GitHub account. So here I'm going to GitHub. And this is the repository I am using to work on the project. And here, if I click actions, you can see the latest commit that I, that I commit that it says running Terraform destroy has triggered the pipeline. And if I go into that pipeline, you can see the pipeline here, right? Which is literally all these things you are seeing, right? Is literally what I am showing you. Um, is literally what I'm showing you here. And um, if I go into the pipeline, uh, I'm sorry, my zoom is in the way. So it's kind of like, so if I go into the pipeline, right, it has configured my AWS credentials. Now it is in progress. It is now running this job, which is building AWS infrastructure. If you select it, you can see the output. So here it is running um, Terraform destroy. And if you look at the output, this is literally the same output you see on your screen, whether when you are running Terraform apply or Terraform destroy. But the only thing I'm doing right now in this pipeline is I've already run Terraform apply to create everything. So right now I'm running Terraform destroy to remove it. So it, it is going through um, the Terraform destroy and it is going to run everything and it would destroy my environment. So this is a perfect project you can present during your interview. One of the questions people always ask me also is that, oh, all this project I'm working on, how do I present it? 
well, this is a good way to present it. Because once you are done with this project, delete everything by running Terraform destroy. You just type destroy where I just type destroy, delete everything. And when you are going to your interview, you change that destroy to apply. It will create, it will run the pipeline, create everything for you. And at the end, you will have the website to install. You can see it is destroying my application now. If I refresh here, this website is not going to be available. So yeah, I'll let this run. Um, and when I'm sharing my screen, I really can see who's raising their hand. I'm sorry. Um, so whoever is raising their hand, you can go next and we'll just wait for this pipeline to run. Oh, okay, I can see it. I think Shola is raising her hand, so you can go ahead, Shola. Ah, yeah, this is Shola. Oh, um, sorry, you sorry, I, Shola yeah. is like a unisex name, so I don't yeah. know how it's thinkers. Okay, Yeah, ahead. I actually joined late, so I don't want to ask any questions. But the thing is, I I think I missed a couple of meetings. Is there a way uh, where I can view the recorded ones? Is it yes, I... I the recorded video, I'm actually um, editing them now to try to make it a little bit better. So once once they are done, I would post the link for you to be able to access them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, Edgar, go ahead. Hello, Asis. Uh, good day or good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. So my question is because like, I always hear you with regards to saying that you could present this to your like you know interview like for example like this like what you're showing on the screen mm -hmm. so how like in, in a scenario when like we're in an interview is it something that can you share like how do i say it? something like i could show this to my employer or something like you no know, interview when like are they like providing let's say a laptop you're like in a scenario when like, you're in a conference room and that you're showing all of this like on the screen. Is that what you're saying? Like sharing this for your interview? Oh, yes. Yeah. So so how you can share it is during your interview, right? You would have an opportunity during your interview. You can bring it up to them that actually an interesting uh, project you you worked on that um, kind of shows the skill set of what you you've done on a day on a day to day. And you would like to present it to them sometimes. Most of the time they say yes, sometimes you might get one person that's not interested, right? So, but if they do give you the opportunity to present it, this is in your GitHub repository, right? And this is already on, on the computer you are working on now because I'm assuming that's the same computer you'll be using to do your Zoom meeting with them. So okay. all you are doing is just sharing your screen the same way I'm sharing my screen and you are running it. So they Got will it. be looking at it on the on the other end. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you can see one of the logic I walked into this pipeline is think about it. We ran Terraform Destroy, right? Terraform Destroy would remove all the resources we created. So uh, where's that picture? I think I closed it. So we run Terraform Destroy. When we run Terraform Destroy, it is going to pretty much delete our VPC, NAT gateway, all those ECS service and everything, right? So when we delete these things, right? We are, remember, this, this is the second job that does that. Then once we delete, once we have deleted our environment, we don't need to run these other jobs because there, will, there wouldn't be a reason for us to create an ECI repository, push our image to it. Because for example, here where we even create a self-hosted runner in this subnet, we wouldn't even have the subnet to create the self-hosted runner in. So that is why we also worked the logic into this pipeline that if we destroy our environment, then we won't run the following jobs that follows it. So that is why, what, that is why in the pipeline you are seeing that here, when we run Terraform destroy here, all these other jobs did not run. So these are all the things you will learn as well. So 
I I think I found the picture I want to uh, share with you guys, but I, I have to email it to myself. Does anyone have any questions? I'm good. Okay. Um. Maybe um when we maybe when we uh meet again, if there is some particular things you guys want me to excuse me i have a question okay yeah go ahead yeah is is it my question is um does it make sense for example if you're trying to get a job and uh and you let the recruiter know that maybe based on your resume your resume is showing maybe probably you have a year experience or you have internship you know i think that puts you in a better position rather than having five, 20 years experience on your resume. And you let them know, hey, I've, during my internship with, uh, with with your bootcamp, for example, that you did a lot of projects and you were able to build re- uh, infrastructures uh, where you deploy static uh, websites or you deploy an e-commerce website and all of that. And you were able to talk about how you get the infrastructure as well as the technologies and tools that we are involved. And does that make sense to a recruiter trying to get an experienced person to do the job? Um, yes. So it does, whatever knowledge you have um, counts as an experience. What okay. you have to focus on is that you can do it. If you yeah. can do it, you can do it. It doesn't matter whether it's something you did at work or something you did on your own. You it's know? the same skills. Yes, it's the same skill sets because the eight, the same AWS console you are using to complete your project is the same exact one you are going to be using at work. There's no difference. So that is why I said the skills is um, very important. The skills is very important. So what I rely on is that if a company is requiring a Kubernetes knowledge that I have Kubernetes knowledge. If a company is requiring Docker knowledge that I have Docker, because at the point when you walk into the interview and uh, they say, oh, I'm looking, and this is a good interviewer would look on your resume and say, uh, oh, I see you have um, Docker knowledge here. Uh, You've done a couple of things with Docker. Please uh, explain it then you can go into the projects you've completed with Docker. At that point, they are not looking to see whether you did it um, at home in a boot camp or at work. They are just listening to what you are saying and they are, it is, re- it are. Is, exactly, it is resonating with them whether you know what you are talking about or not. So, so which is, I would say over anything else for now, the ma- most important thing is getting the knowledge and prioritizing your knowledge over everything once you've done that whatever roadmap you run into when you start applying whether is a recruiter saying oh i I don't want to hire you because you haven't worked in the field or whatever the case may be trust me we will cross that but prioritize getting the knowledge over the fear of someone might not hire you because you are a newbie you haven't worked a paid job before yeah. right yes exactly exactly so but like i always say there's tons of company that will hire you with without with you being a newbie into into the field right so that's what i'll say and this is the picture i was i was telling you guys about and i i just thought this picture is so perfect it um it is it summarizes what I always try to tell everyone that I'm mentoring. Uh, there are foundational steps in order for you to be successful in cloud and and in, in this journey of you learning, you have to pick up the skills piece by piece. Uh, and the mistake I see people making is they are chasing um, either getting a job um, on time or they are chasing requirements uh, or if there's Kubernetes on the thing and they want to they wanna learn Kubernetes tomorrow when they just started AWS yesterday. I will be honest with you guys, I don't know Kubernetes. And it's not because I can't learn it. I, I'm going to work on a Kubernetes project next. 
right? But in my all my jobs and projects I've worked on, uh, Kubernetes wasn't really important, and we I haven't had the opportunity in the field to use Kubernetes. So there is still a lot of jobs that don't use Kubernetes, even though you guys see it on the requirements a lot. By all means, I'm not saying don't learn Kubernetes. You should definitely learn Kubernetes. But what I'm saying is Kubernetes should be one of the last things you learn when you have learned Linux, deploy a web application, understand VPC and troubleshooting your issues, containers before you even get to Kubernetes. I agree with this statement 100%. And don't make that mistake of trying to skip the step, trying to skip the step and jumping into the later things because uh, you see Kubernetes on the, on the resume, on the job requirement, and you want to learn Kubernetes when you don't even understand how to build a Docker image and turn that Docker image into a container in Fygate. I, I absolutely believe that when I start my Kubernetes project, it will be very easy for me to understand because I already have a good foundational knowledge on all these little knowledge that are required. So that is what I encourage you guys to do as you are learning something to keep in mind. Um, before you get to the end goal, the big goal, think of what are the little, little things I need to build my skills in to help me um, better understand this next thing that I'm learning. So um, that's one thing you should keep in mind. And I see a lot of people making this mistake. Yeah, um, at least, uh, like uh, the second step says um, web development. I mean, that to um, a beginner might, might look like, oh, I need to learn these languages that, you know, makes a, a web development. Is that, is that what this is saying or is it saying a, a web deployment? So web, to me, when I'm looking at web development, I'm looking at um, just web deployment. So as a cloud engineer, you don't build the application, right? right. You don't mm -hmm. build, you don't write the code that we use. Uh, they like the, the application I just demoed for you guys. I didn't write the code for that application. That is like a, a web, developer's job but job, right mm -hmm. but in terms of the cloud part you can also understand that okay this application was written in this language in order to host an application written in this language in the cloud i need to install this software my server has to have this software software there are some dependencies that my server needs you can understand it from that standpoint but um for this part, this even though this is, doesn't say web, uh, it says web development, but I would interpret it as web deployment, deployment like yeah. like like you just knowing how to deploy an application in the cloud. Yeah. You know, all these think, all, all these yeah. things needs matters before you get to Kubernetes. So I work on the Kubernetes project next. Someone Edgar asks, uh, do I have a timeline for the Kubernetes project? So I'll say in the next month or so. Um, hi, Aziz. Hi. Yeah, uh, this is Shola. Um, I just want to portray the point you made because I happen to fall into uh, the urge to learn Kubernetes as soon as possible. Um, but what I realized is because I had a very weak foundation in containers, I didn't really understand Docker very well. Kubernetes was really, really difficult for me <laughs> until I went back to study Docker and then I was able to understand Kubernetes better. So I just want to address okay. the point that one has to take it step by step. We have to understand Docker very well before you go into Kubernetes. Uh, there's a lot of urge to learn Kubernetes as soon as possible because there's a lot of demand for it. Yeah. But like you said, the foundation has to be right. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you for confirming. Um, and I, I do see a lot of people making that mistake. And um, in the world, words of a, a wise man on this uh, in this meeting, he always say, and I agree, is a good statement. Uh, how, how do you always say it? you have to uh, um, go slow to go fast? Something like that. You know, you have to take your time to go through the information, 
and build those knowledge before you get to the bigger things. Because if you don't do that, if you try to rush through everything in the beginning, right, you will only waste more time because you waste six months, everything, nothing is going to make sense to you. Then a lot of people get to the point where they get frustrated and they just give up 100%. So uh, I think it's the statement is go slow to go fast. So meaning that in the beginning, take your time, get all the knowledge um, you need, all the foundational knowledge before you start approaching some of the bigger things. And it would just make, it will make understanding those bigger things uh, much easier. So um, this is a good uh, statement. And this picture, I just love this picture so much. When I saw it, I had to uh, take a, a screenshot of it. Um, this picture and another one that I want you guys to keep in mind is um, this one. Let me, uh, where is it at? And this one. So when you guys are thinking about what are the, the basic things I need to learn to get a job as a cloud engineer, what are the things I need to understand? They, they are this. So if someone is telling you something else or anything else, there is no jobs, there is jobs, companies are laying off, whatever it is, block those out. For your goal for now, focus on learning these things. Once you learn these things, whatever hurdle we face when it comes to whether companies are hiring or companies are not hiring, whether there's jobs or not, we will worry about those when we get to that point. But I guarantee you, if you focus on building your knowledge on this justice foundational thing, it won't fail you. So, uh, yeah, that's my little, little rant for you guys. Um, does anyone else have any questions? So we are almost at the end. So I always like to uh, stick to time. So I yes, don't I want do. to uh, as it, share. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, we have a site reliability engineer and uh, also a DevOps uh, cloud. So like what we're doing here, can somebody also apply for a job as a site reliability engineer? Um, yes, you can, but um, a site reliability engineer, uh, their job also translates that pretty much there's nothing you do in cloud and DevOps that doesn't translate to other aspect of the cloud, whether it's you being a solutions architect, but for a, a site reliability engineer, you just most likely have to know a lot about the application you are making sure is stable. So mm. it might require you to know whatever, for example, in that application, they might be using other tools that are not covered in the project because in our project, we are strictly focusing on AWS tools. Uh, for the application you are monitoring and you are managing, they might be using other third-party tools and you have to understand that those tools as well. So certainly what we are doing here is not everything in terms of in, in the cloud, the knowledge is never, there is no um, beginning and end. It is always continuous learning. So you can take everything you are learning here and pretty much run with it and build on it on your own. But I can guarantee you that a lot of the stuff we are learning here would help you out when you go to learn other concepts that are much advanced than what we are learning here. What we are doing here is a really, really, really good foundation. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so we're at one. I'll take one last question because I want to be respectable of you guys' time. And one thing I, will, I want to mention before we leave is, with time is, this always pisses me off too. If at work, if you schedule a meeting for one hour, it better be one hour or less. Because if it goes over one hour, people have mixed feelings with it. Some people don't mind and a lot of people do mind. So I always try to keep that in mind when I schedule meetings, uh, sticking to the time. 
Um, does anyone have one yeah, last when, question? When, when is the? Are we going to have another meeting like this? Yes, this meeting is every week, every Saturday. Oh, every um, Saturday. So yes, 11, 11 Eastern time, eleven to one. Okay. Every, every Saturday. So the, the, is this the first, the very first one, or there's been a subsequent one that I think I'm attending this first time. Oh, this is the second one. We oh, started, okay. We started last week. Yes. Oh, okay. So I missed the, the, the it's fine. first one. It's fine. It's mm-hmm. um, uh, fine. I started this just to have a open dialogue space where I can keep you guys motivated, answer any questions you guys have, um, check how you are feeling as it relates to just the entire journey, just to um, help you get to the your intended goal. So that is why I created um, this meeting. Yes, we have it every Saturday. Aziz, thank you. Um, I think this meeting is just a brilliant idea. Um, you know, from spending a couple of weeks on Slack to seeing this moment and being here today, there's so much more kind of like heart and soul in this. And I feel connected to everybody and uh, a little bit of more stake involvement in us all kind of holding our, our hands to the, to the finish line we're trying to get to. So, um, I really like the, the formula you've got going. Um, and then just from a a quick selfish point, I'd love to connect with you offline later. Um, I'm at, I'm super stuck and I really need just to get through. Um, thank you so much. And everyone, uh, it's been so wonderful to speak with you and hear what everybody has to say. Thank you. I look forward to some more. Time of the incident here. Yeah, sure, sure. It happened this morning. Aziz, uh, yes. I uh, just want to ask that: okay. Are you are you considering uh, making a, a presentation for uh, people who are weak in uh, architectural uh, diagram drawing? Oh yeah, we can. Oh, that could be a good. That's a good idea. So. Next week we can work on uh, we can do a demo on how to draw a reference architecture. So yes, we can. I can make. Uh, I can do a demo on that for you guys. That's not a problem. Yes. So um, so for those that are interested in the reference architecture, yes, I can. I can definitely show you how to build one next week in our next meeting. So that would be great. To- yeah, to use no draw that IO and others. Sure. Lucy Chad. Sure, sure. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Noah, thank you. Um, I appreciate you guys and keep up the good work. I guarantee you guys, if you stick with it, the only thing standing between you and whatever your cloud goal is, is your daily activity as it relates to how you are doing the work. Um the work that will get you to the end goal there is no it is not whether you are smart enough to learn the information it is not whether you are good enough to learn the information it is just learning everything piece by piece and um and at the end all those little knowledge becomes one big knowledge that you are applying to your day-to-day tax so I, at a good time i will have an opportunity to share where I started from because I didn't know any of this. And like I always, I'm very transparent with you guys. There's still a lot of stuff I don't know that I'm still learning as I go. So it will be the same case for you guys too. So don't ever feel intimidated that where you are, whether you will get a job or not, you will get a job. So as long as you are consistent and you do your part, you will be fine. And Noah, I would give me Yes, send me a message on Slack when it will be a good time for you today. Let me just rest for like maybe like 30 minutes and I can jump back on Slack with you if that works for you. And if you are not free in 30 minutes, let me know when you are free and I'll and I'll and I'll join. I'm so. gonna prioritize your moments of free time as <laughs> 30 minutes, I'll be here. Okay, sure, sure. All right, cool. All right, that is it for today's uh, meeting. Thank you everyone for joining. It's good to see more people today uh, please remember we have this every saturday at 11 a.m instant standard time to and it is a meeting where you can discuss we can you can discuss what you are going through if you have any questions and uh, just share pretty much what the journey has been like for you 
Uh, thank you, you guys. Have a thank you, Aziz. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.